Welcome back to Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth, welcoming in the studio. He is the founder of Second Chances Life. Welcome him back. It's been a while, but he's back. Dave Lewis in the building. What's up, G? How you doing, brother? Man, I see, you, uh, you see, I see you brought um, some power uh, <laughs> with you. Uh, welcoming Judge Jordan. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How you doing? Uh, doing well. And Judge Jones. Hey, how you doing? Doing well. Um, gentlemen, we are here to talk about an up-and-coming community event that you all have on the uh, 23rd, uh, Second Chances Life. It's putting on um, who we are. Uh, Dave, well, first, before we get into the event that's happening on the 23rd, tell us about Second Chances Life and... Uh, what it is that you all do, your mission, right, and uh, the inspiration behind it. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for having us, um, giving us the opportunity to share this on your platform and share this with the city. So I really appreciate that. Um, we're a nonprofit organization um, based out of Los Angeles, California. Um, now um, in Houston, been here. Uh, this is our second year. And our whole goal is to reduce recidivism in the community. And for those that that's a fancy word for keeping people out of the system. Um, Our main focus is uh, providing um, not just being advocates, um, but also providing resources for those that are coming out, such as housing, um, job placement, education, self-development. A big piece of ours is mental health. Mm. Um, That's like a large thing. Like that's in addressing the why. Um, When you start addressing the why, you start addressing the issue. And so that's really one of the things that uh, we've identified. So, yeah, we that's really who we are and our mission, and that's why we're here. Indeed. Uh, so, gentlemen, how did how did you two become down? I mean, two, you know, high-profile judges in the city uh, down with uh, something like this? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I think as, as judges and um, doing what we do, it's important uh, to see a better way, if there is a better way, and so I think for years, uh, jailing people uh, without regard as to the why has been par for the course. But as we learn better, we should also do better. And so we are part of the movement to reform the criminal justice system. Um, and I believe in reforming the criminal justice system. It makes us all better. It makes us all safer. Uh, there are studies that say if we... Uh, were to, it would be cheaper for us to go spend money to house all the homeless people than to leave them out on the streets now and care for them and provide services. But that's hard for some people to swallow. But uh, when why it comes, you know, I think people, they don't understand why people are homeless. They, I think we process stuff through our own lenses. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when we see somebody who's uh, stealing food or stealing Similac, We're saying, hey, you're a thief, you know, go to jail as opposed to saying, hey, okay, so you had a child at 15. Your mother's a a crack addict. You know, we don't look at the why. We just look at punish. But in order to raise the tide for us all, we have to look at the why. Mm. Um, Judge Jones. Um, So what brought me here, uh, really, since we started with Judge Jordan, Judge Jordan, in a sense, brought me here. We used to uh, work work together a time ago and – I learned a lot of a lot about the the ideas and the um the statistics and things to do with criminal justice reform from Judge Jordan, and I think uh, one of the major reasons that um, I want to participate is because from that learning and understanding, people need to learn. They need to hear what's going on as far as statistics, as far as what is more transformative or restorative justice, so we can actually have real gains. Um, that's why I wanted to participate. Indeed. Um, what kind of judges are you two? Family so, court. Mm-hmm. We're both we're both criminal judges. I'm yeah, I'm criminal. felony felony criminal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so and and I, I'm the uh, head misdemeanor court judge over the entire misdemeanor court system, and and basically the difference between misdemeanors and felonies, I, I deal with uh, offenses that you can be punished less than a year. And uh, Judge Jones, I mean, not that he's sending anybody to the death penalty, but he deals with people longer than a year all the way to death. Mm-hmm. And so um, th- th- that's the difference. Felony court, misdemeanor court. Indeed. You listen to Access Houston, talking to Judge Jordan, Judge Jones, and Dave Lewis from Second Chance Life. Um, the event that is coming up on the uh, 23rd, uh, we're talking restorative justice reform. 
uh, bail reform. Um, it's <laughs> it's so interesting um, when it comes to bail reform, um, which I believe, if I'm correct, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, with the 19 black judges that were uh, elected into office last year, and they are the ones that brought forth this uh, bail reform, which was deemed unconstitutional. Uh, I remember having uh, one of the owners of one of the bail bonds company on this program, and uh, we had a debate um, about that. And um, I was asking questions about, okay, so, you know, his, his thing was, you know, letting people off on a PR bond so they can go back into the community and they commit the same crime. Like, you know, my grandmama ain't safe doing all that, all that. Me personally, I was like, well, sir, like, I th- feel that that's a weak argument. So tell me, can you tell me what the numbers are um, from those that get out on a PR bond, come back to their court date and, you know, do their due diligence versus the ones that don't. And he didn't have the numbers. And so in that very moment, it clicked. I said, oh, so this is about the money for you then. You know, that you're, you're not, cons- you're, 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 miss me with the hogwash about, you know, keeping the community protected. This is about affecting your bottom line. You don't like what's going down because it's going to affect, you know, the money. And, you know, he d- didn't admit to it, but that was the vibe because, you know, I just obliterated him with, you know, the question. He couldn't answer anything that I said to him. Having said all of that, now, I just read yesterday that the governor of Texas and the Texas state legislator, uh, legislator now wants to um, do away with judicial elections and they want to appoint these judges now i'm like oh let me guess it was the 19 women (laughs) judges that got in with this bill reform because it's been this way all this time it was working for y'all now it's working the other way now i want to change it back Mm -hmm. thoughts you know um yeah i wouldn't be here today under the appointed system um um i was elected when i was 40 40 i'm a young black man uh graduate Uh, graduate of Texas Southern University, nobody looking for me, (laughs) you know? And so, you know, to take it out of the hands of the people is to basically uh, end diversity. Then you have to go play the game. You got to be in the good old boys club uh, to get at the good old boys table. And so, you know, I like the system the way it is. I like it in, 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 in control with the people because right now in Harris County, we have a young diverse judiciary and and we are bringing about new things. Uh, you know, back in the day when I was growing up, if you had a mental health issue uh, in our neighborhood, which it did, you got beat. Well, now we know there's medication and everything else. You you shouldn't do that. And but some people like staying in the old way. And so with 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 young, new, fresh blood comes a new process, a better process, and that's what we have now. So I'm all for the people making the decision. That's it. Yeah, I think the people should definitely make the decision. And um, like you're saying, I find it to be hogwash, too. It's, uh, it seems, you know, that it's just built on a way to monetize mainly black and brown people. You monetize them through the through the bail, the bail bond system and you kind of keep people at bay um, by by not allowing to have these elections. And then it's just awkward that, you know, for many, many years, the system was just fine. But now just that yeah, it was just fine. But now we see. There's diversity in the judiciary. There's fairness in, in the judiciary. There's a different frame of thought. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden it's broken. Mm-hmm. And that, that says a lot about the people that want to change it. And it says a lot about their mentality. And, um, Indeed. you know, without without them just outright saying they're racist, it's, it's borderline, you know, seemingly racist because, I mean, for years it was a, the system was just fine and dandy. You're, and for years, exposing themselves. Yeah, <laughs> and the system didn't work well for black, black and brown people. Mm-hmm. And now the people are trying to change the system um, obviously, they want to change it to move people to keep look like that, them. That, that that same control. It's 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 astonishing. Dave, your thoughts? Oh yeah, I agree a hundred percent. This country continues to capitalize off of our pain. Like I say that on a daily basis. Like everything that's implemented is to not address the why, but the what. And we've always had to play from behind. And now the fact that uh, I'm just excited and proud to be in Houston at this time in my life. I was Judge Jones and I were having a conversation outside about how we're on the forefront of history um, right here in Houston with the things that are coming down, 
um, Judge Jordan is leading the way on bail reform. Um, and he's doing phenomenal things in his court, um, not criminalizing things that shouldn't be criminalized and not things like bail reform is so important to, to the, it affects the poor people. And that's what the jail system is full of. I always said if that old bail system um, wasn't in place, Sandra Bland would still be alive. <clears throat> yeah, Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Uh, $500. Five hundred dollars, and when just jumping on bail reform for a second, uh, when I was elected, I was the only Democrat, and I was there with fifteen judges. And in the federal lawsuit, I went and testified against all the judges, and basically spilled the beans and told them how bond was being used. And from there, with the election, then we were able to change the rules within seventeen days of the new judges being elected. And so now we've uh, days away from having that lawsuit uh, finalized. And, and then we also changed the court appointment system uh, where the the job posting will go out this week to hire the leader of the managed assigned counsel program where it will take the power out of the judges to make the court appointments. And I remember when Judge Jones and I were talking before he was elected, I said, man, you're going to be me times 10 hmm. uh, because, you know, it's one thing to make those bold moves on the misdemeanor side because Keep in mind, when people get a PR bond, what we are saying is money does not make people safe. Mm-hmm. If a person is dangerous, and let, let them stay in jail. But the minute you attach a dollar amount to them, what you're saying is when they have that amount of money, they now become a better person. They now become a safe person. And we know that is not true because otherwise people in the, the poorest neighborhoods in Houston, where all of them are dangerous and people from River Oaks are all safe. Uh, and so now uh, Judge Jones is finding ways to incorporate uh, giving people PR bonds when they're charged with felonies. And I know it's not a popular thing, but what people have to realize, we are judges, we have to follow the law, and we have to truly believe that people are innocent until they're proven guilty. Bail is not meant to punish people. Hmm. Let's say that again. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say a lot of for the people in the back. <laughs> you listen to Access Houston talking to Dave Lewis from Second Chances Life and uh, Judge Jordan and Judge Jones. So, um, the event on the 23rd. Tell us what's going down. Right. So they've been on the 23rd. Super excited about it. So this is our second annual community enrichment event. And um, we're basically bringing resources to the community, um, whether it's education, whether it's jobs. We're doing free health screenings. Um, and also, um, like our elected uh, people that are in their seats that are fighting for people that look like you and I, like the community needs to see them. They need to understand who they are, what they're doing, and how this impacts the entire community. Like a lot of people have no idea that these two judges are leading the way in in reform in our communities. And I think it's important to not only talk about it, but also to understand this. Because when we have elections and we have things that really affect us, like locally, people don't understand the power in local voting. Like you right. put the right people in the right seat that really do care about the community and care about decriminalization of things that we shouldn't be criminalized for. That is when we start to change the narrative in our community. And so just having a the bail reform piece right now, criminal justice reform is a hashtag. Yeah. But for people that look like us, it's, rea- it's a real thing. Like we really do need to change this. And, and we change this by understanding what this means, what it looks like and you know, it's it's a fight. You know? it, it is a fight, and and we do need to change it. I hear a lot of people. Well, everybody says like the criminal justice system is broken. Like we got to fix it. The criminal justice system is broken. I say no, it's not. Yeah. The criminal justice system isn't broken. It's working exactly how it was designed to work against us. And then noticeably, you know, to piggyback off what you're saying. I agree. I believe like it, it works the way it's designed to work. And then until you get people like Judge Jordan, what, what he did with the misdemeanor courts to come in and make changes, that's all it's going to do. It's, it's designed to be punitive. Mm-hmm. It's not really designed to be real rehabilitative. It's not right. designed exactly. to be restorative. It's not designed to be transformed. In fact, it's harder to do those things. You have to work harder, mm-hmm. stay up longer and reach out easily. You can send people to jail, prison every single day. And it's the, the documents are there. People know how to do the processes. But when it comes to be restorative and rehabilitative, that's when people start to get confused and you start to have a lot of friction like what we have right now in this state. But um, you're, you're, you're exactly right. You, ha- you have to have actors within the system 
that are actually going to try to do something differently. Other, otherwise, yeah. Change. Yeah, yeah, otherwise, you're just going to have yeah. what you've been having. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're right. Yeah, one of my uh, my new role models uh, is uh, Harriet Tubman, and uh, to be f- to free herself uh, from slavery and then go back over ten times and free a hundred more people. Mm-hmm. That's what we all have to do. The minute we take a step out of our bad situation, a good situation, when, we, when we're when we able to turn back, we have to turn back immediately and start helping others. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing the amount of people that lack the courage, mm. that lack the courage Talk to about. turn back and help others. They're just worried about themselves. Oh, well, I call it the me and mine uh, mentality. Me and mine are good, so mm. I'm not worried about anybody else. But what, what what if Harriet was like that? Mm. You know, what what if all the people that have sacrificed before uh, during the Civil Rights Movement, you had to worry about getting bit by dogs, water holes, bust head bust open. Now we people blogging about us, or saying something bad about us on Facebook, and so you know, I I, I fight every day, and I don't care who gets upset about it. I, I don't and, care. And I appreciate that. And that's and that is why I use this uh, platform. This is what I use mm-hmm. it for. Uh, what you just said just reminds me of what uh, former President Barack Obama said at his um, at him, him and Michelle's um, ordeal. They had a few weeks ago um, with their uh, organization. And he was saying he was like, you know, the whole talking about the whole woke uh, movement and like, you know, you on Twitter you know, tweeting out a hashtag. That's that's not being woke. Right, I mean, right. You know, are you correcting somebody because they had a, a, gramma- a, a grammatic error in their tweet? And you're like, oh, I, I corrected them to get them right. Like, I'm woke. Like, that's not, that's not activism. Like, you got to get out in the streets and do the work, not sit behind your computer or thumb type on your, on your phone and say that that's activism. So, yeah, y- yeah you're, you're on it. Um, Dave, where can people go get more information uh, on the event and, um, so and, and can, what the community can do to help? As got well? it. Um, so they can uh, find us on all social media platforms. It's at secondchances.life. So second chances is the number two ND, chances with an S. Most people try to spell it out, S-E-C-O-N-D. That's, it's the number two. Um also, we're on Eventbrite at Second Chances Event. You can okay. go on there. It's a completely free event. It's open to the public. Um, also, our website is www.secondchances.life, so pretty easy, pretty simple to find us. Um, also, email us if you guys want to, info at secondchances.life. Um, follow us, um, sign up, share this with your friends. So anybody that you know, uh, we've got uh, Houston um, community um, and development, new developments coming out. With, they have some new programs, some free money. Um, if people want to buy homes, um, just tons of vendors. Like Again, like we're doing free health screenings. We're going to have stuff for the kids. Um, we're also doing a special screening of our documentary, Second Chances. Um, so that's we're, we're doing that at 1030 before that. So this is our second time uh, screening that here. Like we won – uh, I think like 15 awards already on nice. the documentary. So it's doing well, but it's again, like it goes back to what you said, which is why, how second chances dot life birth. Like it's about the same thing that judge Jordan and judge Jones are doing. It's like reaching back, you know, people talk about Harriet and um, it's about dismantling, you know, fear and coming back. Like I came back to Texas. I'm from Texas, but I ran, like I left, like I didn't like the environment I grew up in. The richest person in my community was a dope dealer. So I ran from that, you know, but the the beauty of it all is that I understand my purpose now mm-hmm. and I understand that I can't just leave my community. Mm-hmm. Like we have to reach back. We have to implement something. People have to be able to feel you. They got to be able to touch you and you got to do the work. And it's you. It's unpopular. It's not yeah. easy to do. But, it's not. you know, it's, it's why we're here. Well, you know, um, change is uncomfortable. People got to get uncomfortable. That's the only yeah. way change is happening. It's going to happen. Like yeah. you got to get uncomfortable, yeah. and so um, we will see you all on uh, November twenty third. That is a Saturday. Saturday from ten to three. Saturday from ten to three uh, at Buffalo Soldier Museum. Indeed. And so, oh, this is the thing that I'm going to be part of the moderator for, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, ding 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 ding. Uh, how about that? Hey guys, I'm going to be a moderator for uh, the second chance of it. No, because the flyer that you sent me they said the thirteenth, so I thought it was. You know, something um, separate. Um, 
But yeah, it's going to be dope. So uh, thank you. Dave Lewis, founder of Second Chances Dot Life. Uh, I should have been saying that. I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Why it's you all correct good. me, bro? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you. Judge Jordan, Judge Jones, man. Thank you all. I'm um, oof. glad to know. Hopefully, I can have y'all back on and we can Anytime. talk yeah. more uh, reform because I want to get deep, 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 deep into it. We just didn't have the time in this segment, but uh, y'all will come back. Yeah, Anytime. Thanks for having me. All right, all of Houston, y'all heard it. Okay, right I'm going to hold them to the word. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, sir. And thank you for listening to Access Houston. Listening to Access Houston. Listening to Access Houston.